Does George Clooney make you want to buy an espresso machine? Or maybe Nike inspires you to just do it? Well, that positive reaction on your part is called, by advertisers, evaluative conditioning. But what kinds of conditioning are actually taking place that make you feel so good and watch these ads? In Seattle, assistant marketing professor Stephen Sweldens and two others have studied this phenomenon, and they've published a paper entitled, Evaluative Conditioning and the Resilience of Conditioned Brand Attitudes. Stephen, welcome. Uh, reading the report was actually better than reading the title there. <laughs> um, how, how does this want to buy it phenomenon actually occur? I mean, if I'm looking at George Clooney and John Malkovich, I'm kind of taken by the two of them on the screen. Maybe I'll buy Nespresso, maybe not. Why, why is that going to work? If you look at Nespresso, it will remind you of George Clooney. Yeah? And because you like George Clooney, you will like Nespresso more. That's what we call an indirect transfer of effect. It's not Nespresso that has become more popular per se. No, it's the reminding you of this celebrity, this endorser that you actually already like that will subsequently make you like the brand more. That's one of the things that advertisers do by embedding their brands in positive contexts or pairing up with celebrity endorsers. Right? Now, um, an additional process in increasing liking towards the brand could be a direct transfer of feelings. So how does it work more directly? You, you talk about well, the direct Well, so another thing that could be going on is that these stimuli evoke positive feelings. Yeah? And so somehow, maybe, these positive feelings, when they're experienced at the same moment that you see the brand, could maybe authentically, directly rub off to the brand. Direct transfer of feelings, though, that... that that is pretty powerful. That how does your research advise advertisers or brand managers on what to do with their brands in terms of getting positive feelings, positive images? Affective feelings are interpreted faster than uh, the cognitive interpretation of what has exactly caused those feelings. That means that you experience affective reactions a few milliseconds before you know what has exactly generated uh, the affective reaction. And that is what generates the possibility for effective confusion. If we see two things at the same time, exactly at the same time, of which one is generating the positive feelings, those can be misattributed to the other thing because it's not interpreted yet by the slower cognitive system. So that is the key condition to transfer feelings directly to your brand. You have to see the brand at exactly the same moment simultaneously with uh, the evoking of, of positive feelings. And so in that nanosecond, you make that decision, I'm going to buy this. Well, no, that's, that's what's going to happen afterwards. Huh? So once the feelings have been transferred to the brand, indeed we know that it's very powerful in consumer buying decisions, huh? which for many consumer packaged goods occur in the final seconds before their, uh, the final seconds at the shelves, huh? uh, in which they choose between the different products based on how they feel towards them. Do you think the consumer maybe feels a little bit used or manipulated and is there any backlash? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Consumers are very well aware of marketeers influencing attempts and, and for the better, I would say. Eh? Because uh, what, what we want is consumers making informed decisions and being happy about their decisions, obviously. Does this kind of positive and indirect influencing somehow overcome things like price, which is more and more important these days? That would depend on the product category and on consumer's orientation, and it may even depend, uh, uh, depend on the time of day or many different factors. Uh, hard question. There's so much advertising these days. How likely is it that, that kind of one commercial actually gets through this barrage of clutter and has an impact? What, what are some of the key factors there? Now, if there's one thing we know from learning research is that people uh, forget as soon as they learn new things. So they don't forget automatically, but they forget at an alarming speed when they engage in new learning. And that's typically a problem in advertising because you've got one commercial which is followed by the next, which is followed by another brand, which is followed by your favorite movie show. And every time consumers engage in the next thing, they forget about what they've seen before. So let me end by asking you why you decided to do this research. What struck me was huge uncertainty about the process that was going on. So how does this increase in positive feeling come about? And people had not been distinguishing between these different procedures, eh? sequential, simultaneous, same pairings, different pairings of brands with positive things. And I thought, well, maybe uh, these different procedures will trigger different learning processes. And that's been my starting point. And, 
Uh, and that's also been the way in which we were able to finally distinguish between these different types of feeling transfer. Hopefully you'll do more of this and you'll come back and tell us about it again. I would love to. Thank you very much, Stephen Sweldon, for being with us on NCAD Knowledge. My pleasure, Shelley.